Welcome to the uh, planning board meeting of March 7, 2019. Uh, this evening, our members absent are Tom Cashin, Vice Chair, Donovan LaJoy, and Executive Secretary, and Brenda Bailan. Meeting call to order. Leslie. Leslie, I'm sorry, I called her Brenda. Yeah. <laughs> That's the new hair color. <laughs> Meeting call to order at um, 7 o'clock, plus or minus here. Um, I'd like to have the approval of the uh, minutes, please. Dennis, as an alternate, you will be voting tonight to go to our quorum. Old business. Um, Brad Jones or Mr. Martell, you are up. Uh, good evening, uh, I'm Brad Jones, I'm with uh, Jones of Beach Engineers, and uh, Arnie Martell is my client. Uh, he was unable to make it tonight, and uh, he guaranteed he would be here for every other meeting, and I uh, apologize for not being here tonight. So, um, I'm here tonight to kind of go back through the, uh, the plans that were submitted. Uh, the plans that you have today were the same plans that you saw at, at our last meeting, and uh, uh, nothing's changed. The uh, one new document that you have that I sent was the uh, deal plan comparison letter, and what I did is I went through that yield plan and kind of compared what it would, uh, what the two different subdivisions would result in. Uh, I can kind of go through that quickly. It's uh, if we did a conventional subdivision per that deal plan, we would have had uh, 3,450 feet of uh, road. If we uh, used the cluster subdivision, which is the larger plan, uh, we have 1,950 feet of road. So it, it actually saves uh, 1,500 feet of, uh, of road uh, between the two, comparing, comparing the two, uh, two subdivisions. The average lot size for the conventional system, of our, which is on the yield plan, would be 3.26, and the uh, average lot for our cluster is 1.3. So you can see the lots have uh, uh, actually uh, reduced in size by half, pretty much, uh, throughout, the, throughout the subdivision. Um, and the last thing would be open space. Obviously, with the uh, yield plan, conventional subdivision, we would be zero uh, acres of open space. Uh, with the cluster subdivisions would be 41, 41.2 acres of open space. So that's uh, kind of a rundown of, of that plan that uh, maybe I can make what the difference would be. So, so I don't know if you have any questions on the... On your subdivision sure. application? Yep. Um, Yeah, so it, it's actually 41.02 acres of, of open space. Yeah. That's lot 14 and lot 13. And you can 
see actually lot 12 does not have water access. Uh, the remaining land, that's where the 41 acres comes in, it's, it's all open space. So there is... No, I'm sorry, I'm in conventional land. Oh, conventional? Yeah. Um, Yeah, so the conventional would have uh, uh, two lots, uh, lot 10 and 9, that would have uh, water And then like the lot, is the lot 20 below the ground the water? Lot 20, no. Mm -hmm. Lot 20 is separate. So in the conventional plan, only lots 10 and 9 would have water access? Uh, on the yield plan, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be 10 and 9. It looks like there's a little bit on, on uh, 8. eight yeah. yeah, there's a corner there yeah, that's uh, it's got a small, small part of the water. Yeah, Kind of swampy right in that area, low lying. Um, there's an island. There's not, you couldn't put a dock or anything in there. I don't think. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a cove in there, if you will, in the peninsula that sticks up. So that dark line is the, is the water frontage and it goes right up to the above the lot. So, so I, I think the goal tonight was to approve the application to send it to Southern Maine Regional for review. And then um, we can work with the planners there and Brad and go through it all and um, uh, come up with a list of things they need to correct, if there's any, to, to make sure it's in compliance. And then, um, then they can come back and make their changes and come back to us and go from there. Southern I Maine think Regional. we should go to Southern Maine Regional before we, before um, we accept the actual application. The well, it's not not right. not accepted. Have you heard from DEP? Yes, um, we have a meeting set up. I believe it's this twenty uh, seventh of March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that, right. Uh, no, actually, the first initial meeting is, is in Portland. And then, uh, and then we afterwards, uh, it's kind of just a mission meeting to find out who the reviewer is and all that. Yeah. They they have our plans, but they yeah. But that, then the site walk would take place sometime. Uh, after. We inform uh, Ken or the board of when the site walk is. Uh, so we want to attend. Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I being new to this, but I have read a few. Things that came out from Southern Maine Regional Planning, and uh, I would think before we move forward, any father that will send it to them because they were really pretty good at that. Yeah. Critiquing it. Yeah, they have good input. And, and their their input will and will help us form uh, concise conditions that uh, so we can move forward as we did the last yeah. time. Yeah, I agree. It actually polishes the plan. It's it good does. To have it polishes the plan. It helps everyone. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we can move forward, lickety split. And right. Mr. Martell will be here. And, uh, yes. <clears throat> and we can start walking the property one or two times. Yeah, I would say there's still probably a little snow up there. You think so, huh? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> and I'll snow going up there uh, a week and a half ago. So yeah, yeah. There's plenty of snow there. Plenty of snow up there. And then we'll go into lead season, which I think we did. We're going into lead season. Depends where you live. Depends on where you live. Depends where you live. That's if the driver was paid for that. You know. Well, I remember when we went out there the first time on the first uh, phase one, it was muddy. Mm -hmm. It was very it was muddy. It was like drizzly day. Drizzly day and muddy. Yeah. 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 So, good. So, do we need to vote? 
that? I would say vote to vote accept it. To accept it and send it on to Southern Maine. So Are we voting to accept both sketch plans, so to speak, and send both sketch plans to Southern Maine for their mm -hmm. secondary review? Of, do we want to have the typical subdivision of the cluster just get their input as a before you know we can accept both as the sketch plan, or should we select one? Or should they uh, I, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. Get their okay. input and then no, make no, a selection. No, no, I don't. I don't believe that uh, there's any talk of doing a standard subdivision. Well, so we've always pushed cluster in the past. We pushed cluster. I think it's it's the cluster, um, and for a lot of reasons that are right here, less roads, less congestion, less everything. True, but Southern Maine might pick up something that's not being presented to us right now. It, there's a chance, I mean. But I don't think they're, they're not really presenting that to us. I think it would be good to put the yield plan before them so they see it. Because I would say, too, like, even on the yield plan, I mean, just the difference of, like, water access. You know, yeah, is that, is that really what we're talking about? There's only going to be two or three people on the yield plan, whereas 22 on the cluster plan? No. Is well, that no, the, the difference, or what are we looking at? The, actually, the yield plan has two lots that are, have water frontage in the cluster subdivisions the same. There's two two dedicated similar lots in those respects. Yeah, so it's really okay. the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we were the same. Well, there. except the common ground would be on the waterfront, and everyone was having access to the common. Ground. Well, yeah, because there'd be that common space down there. Yeah. 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 The so dogs. it would be a little bit different in that respect. Yep, there would be there would be access to the entire open space area. Well, these are the plan. You still have the open space. No, there's no, no open no, space. There's, there's no open there's space. space. There wouldn't be any. There's yeah. no open space. No. Not on the yield. Some of the lots are just larger than others, and that's the whole thing. Well, right. that that would go against our comprehensive plan because. It says in there that it was supposed to encourage the, the cluster development in the open space. And that was a lot of discussion when we did the seven acres, is where's the open space, when's the open space coming? And they said, it's coming on the next subdivision. So, I mean, that was kind of the, the guidance the board had given generally. But Yeah, 
I think they're probably going to have to get that anyway, just as a example of how the cluster could work. They need to have a copy of the year plan in the package anyway, right? If it's part of the application to Southern Maine. We can send it to them, but we really don't send it with. We're looking for their input. We're not going to give them ours that way. So we can we can right, right, we right. can include it. Right. Yeah. The the, yeah. Uh, the letter. What I would say is we could include the letter that you sent us. Yeah, that's just by the package. And I have kept the plan separate. I didn't yeah. have it included in the set that gets. No, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. We have it here. Okay. And we can include it that way. So. Um, I mean, they may come back and say that this cluster thing isn't—it's a cluster. Right. You, 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 <laughs> you know, you need to—you sure. need to try to do something different with this. You know. Right. right. And then, to me, then you can look at the other. Right. Mm -hmm. So that way, I would entertain a motion to send this to Southern Maine. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. We'll get this out Great. right away. Yeah, if you see anything else you need, we got the email. Yep. Yeah, and get it to get to you. Well, we'll we'll jump on can and you know sure. how that works. We'll, we'll get to you and go. So does that mean they're officially submitted and the clock is ticking? Or is well, it's in the review stage. It's in the review stage. We just um, accepted the sketch plan. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very early in the. Yeah. So, yeah. so as far as uh, do you think we would be appropriate to come to your next meeting or do you think the review is going to um, once we get it to Southern Maine we'll get a time frame on that so, and, okay. and um, yeah. if we need we'll set a meeting with us them you will all go up there and uh, if there's any additional information that you can't submit electronically, we need to sit and we go and then we'll get a timeline from them. At the same time, you'll be working with the DEP trying to get that stormwater site plan going with them. That's so right. yeah. um, at least we're, we've got several avenues going in the same way. So, okay. uh, But I would say no for the next meeting, but uh, we'll know better once they've got it and they'll start direct communication with you, CC, and us all in that too, so we'll be able to get it going. Now if we don't attend the next meeting, do you need a letter each time? No. No. Okay, so that's fine. So we'll obviously we'll be I'm sure your client will be in communication. He will probably be in communication. Yeah. 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 He might be yeah. at the door. Yeah. Yeah. He might be here later tonight to find out if Brad did okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'll <laughs> check up on him. That's correct. Yeah. I'm watching you on Facebook. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. watching you now. Yeah. Well, I know you can't do that. No, but you'll be here in the last place. Okay, that sounds great. Awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Hey, just an hour. Perfect. That's a laser right there for Dana if he needs it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. You know, yeah. Dana, 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 Dana. Dana. Uh, so, yeah, we're very excited. We had a meeting with, uh, pre-application meeting with Ken yesterday. And he invited us to join you here tonight, so thank you for having us. Uh, one of the questions you, you may first ask is, okay, who's Granny Rose? Uh, Granny Rose is the grandmother of the founder, uh, Linda Gregorick. Uh, her name, nickname was Rose, Rose Wentworth. And uh, she was married to Ralph Wentworth, descendants of the Remicks. So what's interesting about this property is she kind of traces her history, you know, all the way back to, I think, 1763. And uh, this proposed 63 acres, uh, I believe it's about six acres of development that we're proposing. Um, so just for orientation, yeah. Yeah. we are right here, fire stations here, you're going down yeah. the hill on 109. Uh, the, the, probably the bottom of it is right there, so yeah. right before you get to the bottom. Uh, this is their parcel. This is the general development area. Sam Page on the back side there. And the antique farmhouse is on Sam Page, which is serving as uh, Gravy Rose headquarters now. And that's where my office is. Uh, so we are, uh, Grammy was a lover of dogs, uh, all animals, but especially dogs. Uh, the founders, Linda and Glenn Gregorick, have rescued many dogs. And uh, this has been their vision for this property, I believe, for a, a number of years. Uh, they were searching for an executive director and someone to come down with some animal welfare experience to head up this project. And I was lucky enough to, to hook up with them. I've been in Galactin since June. I believe we've been on uh, in the antique farmhouse for a while uh, on Sam Page. Uh, so the vision, as you see here, uh, incorporates uh, an adoption center. And if you head up through the property, if we just concentrate on the animal rescue operation, what and what makes this project unique is we're proposing uh, developing six what we call residential canine cabins. Um, there's really going to be a focus on enrichment for the dogs. There'll be you know, numerous walking trails that some, you know, most of them are already blazed through the property. Uh, each cabin will have, you know, have a, a very homey feel, have a, a kitchen, living room, um, and obviously a, a laundry room and storage. Uh, and then in the back, there will be six kennels or six bedrooms, uh, larger size than what we would see in a traditional shelter. Each one will have a, a little outdoor run. Uh, we're proposing building two of those canine cabins uh, uh, initially. Uh, once, you know, hopefully the rescue uh, gains some momentum and, uh, and the operation expands, we would. Uh, proposed building the, the remainder four that you see. Uh, the adoption center down below at the entrance uh, will focus, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, will function as a traditional animal shelter. Uh, we certainly need to satisfy all the, the state requirements, the isolation room, the quarantine room. It's where we'll process all the adoptions. Uh, there'll probably be six to eight kennels uh, in the back where when uh, dogs come in, we'll do some behavioral evaluations uh, before moving them into the cabins. Uh, we applied for our 501c3 at the end of the last year. We just got a letter. I think we're about three months away from, from hopefully receiving uh, our 501c3 status. So we, we will indeed be a nonprofit organization. And uh, no kill rescue as well. What would be the maximum capacity for dogs? Uh, right now, initially, um, you know, each cabin will have six. We're proposing building two, so there's 12. And then six to eight kennels in the main adoption center. So initially, 20 dogs. Um, we had some, you know, lengthy conversations with Ken yesterday, but the, the mission of the organization is to save rescue uh, adoptable good dogs that are slated to be euthanized. Uh, so we will be transporting dogs from out of state. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as local, 
Um, I think we're going to leave, you know, AWS. Uh, we don't think we're going to have, you know, interested in having a contract with the town. Let AWS have, you know, service their municipalities. Um, so really a focus, you know, there's a movement. Uh, in, in New England, there isn't an over, you know, population issue in kennels anymore. I mean, even, you know, Bangor Humane Society and, you know, a lot of shelters in New England are rescuing from out of state. Um, and I was glad to hear in, you know, in Acton there aren't, you know, really issues of, uh, you know, abuse, neglect. I kind of heard there's, you know, dogs and kind of dogs that get loose and, and strays. Um, so, uh, main focus on, you know, rescuing uh, dogs that are slated to be euthanized. Um, it, once that mission and, and is, is satisfied, and, and you know, there's a lot of rescue groups across the country um, that are servicing this, you know, same mission, you know, move towards older dogs, geriatric dogs, dogs with behavioral issues, but primary focus is on uh, you know, ready to adopt dogs and provide them with a, uh, an environment of, of enrichment and social, socialization. Uh, we kind of serve as a, you know, kind of a, a main you know, recreational camp for dogs in that regard. So. At the most, when you're all built out, you'd be 50 max. 50 max, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking at the plan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that, so. mm -hmm. I mean, we they have talked to Dana about you know future areas of expansion beyond that. Yeah. Um, you know, luckily I think the trends in animal welfare might dictate that you know we wouldn't get to that point. So, um, so yeah, at that point I would say you know around 50 miles. So that's that side of the problem. So this is what I couldn't, I couldn't quite put yes. my brain on where the driveway actually is. So is it down in the dip? There's a little no. for you. So the, the ribbons are up, the two orange ribbons. I would right, there's an orange ribbon flag that's where that, that, roughly where that entrance is going to be. Yep. That's cool okay. there. It's about three quarters of the way up the hill. Okay. Yeah. Coming back this way. Yeah. Coming right, coming to a town hall. Probably uh, with myself, a shelter manager, you know, two to three care techs. So we'll probably employ, you know, four or five employees initially. And then we'll hopefully start recruiting you know, a small army of volunteers as well. Now you said that um, your intent isn't to uh, take away from uh, the shelter we're using now. AWS. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but my question is, would you service actors if they wanted you to? You know, I'd have to bring that up to the founders. I, I know I know that they're they're pretty set. They spend um, you know part of the year down in Florida, and you know I think they only really want to go to shelter in Florida. And they're you know they they kind of see that that epidemic and um, that's happening down there. Uh, my previous sh shelter in Maine, we, we did, you know, quite a few rescues from Florida, you know, locally as well. Um, but, you know, I think initially, um, you know, they, they would stick to, we just want to save those dogs that are slightly to be euthanized first. So if we, if we, you know, get to that point where we're solving that issue, I think they'd be, yeah, right. Can you, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about the minister uh, size? Yes. What's going on over there? Yeah. So, um, uh, Dana, you know, he had some fun with the course here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. They, oh, the course is actually going to be about half that size. Yeah. They, what do you think the coverage is there? Uh, because in our conversation today, they so, so roughly about this this area right here would end up being the miniature. That's half an acre? Yeah. Okay, because in a conversation today, they were thinking that we might be able to stretch that into an acre. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might not be too far off. Um, so, uh, you know, the owners definitely uh, see this as a possibility for a destination place. Um, you know, because of our, our location, I know we get a lot of, you know, uh, you know, folks here for the lakes and the recreation. So I, I think her vision was, you know, for this to not only be a, a revenue source 
for the shelter, but it'd be great for the kids at the lakes and the campground, you know, have an opportunity for them to come. And the mini golf will have a, a dog, it'll have an animal theme. Um, they, they talked about incorporating you know, dog legs. Yeah, exactly. You know, get <laughs> through the dog house, the dog. Um, uh, some main elements in there too, maybe some acting elements, some Grammy Rose elements. So you know, each home will be will be uh, you know catered to the operation in the area. And the, and the golf course is, it is going to be designed by a professional golf a company that designs these on on, on, a, on a regular basis. Yeah. They're actually building one in Maine. Yeah, it's a company out of Arizona, but they've done quite a few projects in the union as well. So, um, et, you know, everything that they're intending to do, they intend to do it very well. Uh, so, you know, the cabins, the adoption center will have a, a residential feel to it, but everything will be done in a, you know, kind of a classic Maine, you know, cottage style. Uh, and the, the course itself, you know, they'd like for that to be a, a draw for people to be challenging and, uh, you know, something that people will come and, you know, play over and over again. Um, there will also be an accompanying ice cream shop, which is everybody's favorite conversation at our board meetings. Um, and, you know, also, you know, serve some food out of there as well. Nachos and some hot dogs. And, So tonight was just conceptual, just probably the idea that yeah. everyone knows yeah. this yeah. is coming. Yeah. I would imagine yeah. we'll have an application fairly soon. Right. You guys are going to start yeah. working with DEP. Yeah. Uh, once we get it, I would assume Southern Maine Regional, send it up through them. and uh, yeah. well, With, with, with the board's permission, once we make the submittal to the town, I'd like to just go ahead and forward that to Southern Maine Regional Planning so that yeah. we can start addressing any concerns they might have yeah. before, before our first meeting. Is this proposal? Is that that's not proposed that way? Right. Right. Yeah. There's one wet lane that's going to be impacted right in the middle of the driveway. Yeah. And then th these wetlands will be there will, will be no impact on those wetlands. There might be some slight grading impacts, but we're going to be well under the 4,300 square feet that we're allowed without permit. Where are your reps? Uh, I'd like to see the septics on this. Um. Yeah, but we haven't gotten that far yet. Right now, the initial thought is that there will be either one or two systems for these six units. There'll be one system for the ice cream shop and one system for the uh, the main facility. And you're going to have a, uh, a septic for the dog waste. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And some of that waste, you know, that we pick up, uh, you know, off the trails and in the dog park, will just go out of waste. Well, the will go the, the, will the dogs be in the um, golf course? No, that's a separate thing altogether. Separate, so separate altogether. It yes. might you you might have dog walking trails behind the cabin area. Absolutely, yeah. you know, because yeah. uh, quite a bit of property. <clears throat> right, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's roughly 63 acres here, yeah. and we like to utilize the entire property for, for walking trails, right. uh, you know, cross country ski trails. Uh, and there, there will be some other, there's been some discussion about having some functions at this facility, you know, like a corporate miniature golf tournament or, you know, come walk your dog for, the, for a Sunday afternoon, those kind of things. To draw people to the facility. Yeah, we're really yeah, thinking yeah. it can be a, a nice you know, community environment for. Yeah, and I think my conversations yeah. go back five or six years with Grammy Rose when the idea first came out. Right, right. And my yeah. big thing was uh -huh. the neighborhood can't hear barking dogs all night all day. Yeah. So the facilities, the buildings will be I don't know, soundproof is the right word, but it'd be you know insulated, good tight windows, so you won't be hearing them from in the buildings and that you know. I wouldn't have bought it to the thing, but... Yeah, there was a big to-do, I think, in Lewiston a few years back. And it was just a, a small kennel that was built. And, I mean, it, it, it got yeah. to be an unhappy neighborhood oh, I got situation. Yeah. 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 Well, these dogs are housed at night yeah. in the building. Seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, the only time I'd really see activity would be... Um, uh, you know, obviously, y'all dogs are going to be monitored. Yeah, right, right. You know, maybe in the, the dog park, you know, you have, um, 
you know, some little play groups going on. Um, you know, I definitely see opportunities. Actually, I remember Jimmy uh, Wu was saying, you know, it'd be a great opportunity for uh, behavioral training. But there's mm -hmm. definitely a need for, for that for dogs. So, you know, I see that dog, dog park as being a great opportunity to have some, you know, training seminars there as well. Because dogs are going to buy. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. met too many that don't. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, 40 years ago, I used to take my kids down uh, before that field blew up. Oh, yeah. And we used to start up on the same page and slide down to 109. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, before that all blew up. Yeah. yeah. Then one of them that, went out over the guardrails and landed one of them. That's quite a sledding. That's right. It was the last time, huh? No. <laughs> I just told me, well, get for things, not like jump. <laughs> So this is, is your concept, and you're going to stay with Ken on uh, as you go forward and give us more yeah, information. Yeah. On right. This this is probably a month, yeah. month and a half before we even come back yeah. to you. That they're in the contractual phase now with the engineer. Okay. We, we've hired a um, local general contractor, Scott McLeod, from Ashco Construction, and I believe today we were um, in contract Walsh engineering. So. So all the wetlands have already been mapped, uh, the, the soils have been looked at generally uh, to make sure that we're not going to have any issues with septic design. Uh, this, we've already put topo on here for two foot contours. Uh, it's, it's ready for, for the engineer at this point. Right. So once he starts the project, it, it's probably going to be two or three process for them. <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, um, concept. A very interesting concept. You know, from uh, well, saving you. saving dogs to serving ice cream. Yeah. Mini yeah. golf. Mini golf. Yeah. Matter of fact, the local kids yeah. uh, uh, busy. Yeah. Some of the um, the miniature golf companies that we've been in touch with thought it was a really great idea because some of them were dog lovers and. Uh, you know, some of these mini golf courses can be pretty lucrative, so they thought it was really smart to, to have a revenue source right there. Any 501c3 that can have its own revenue? Anybody in the basement remember the one that was down? Old Chapman? Yeah, that way, that way, that's it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that was his college, uh, that was his college money. Then when, yeah. he, when he got out of college, it, it closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now just a bunch of trees. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We will look forward to seeing you in here. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you.
let's let's see. Maybe we're going to have events at the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> that we'll need to. Why don't you tell us? <laughs> uh, you, you can visit us when you uh, need some peace and quiet. <laughs> My name is Scott Arnold, and I'm here with my partners, Paul, my daughter Katie, and Cole. And in the fall of 2018, we bought the 50 acres there, which used to be an old, as you said, gravel yard. And it looks like it appeared when we bought it that they were probably doing some illegal uh, pot growing there as well. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Tell me it ain't true. <laughs> really? There's, a, there's two small houses on the property. They're under a thousand square foot each. And then there's a small like little shed slash barn that's about 800 square feet. And um, they're, they're in... This is a laser. I think it's impressive. Well, this last guy took it. <laughs> <laughs> so this we call the salt box. Uh, this is the rec center, a.k.a. a, a workshop with a lot of 220 volt outlets. <laughs> so that's, but it looks like a great little ski shed, you know, a covered overhang, and that's the cape. So what, what we did in our site plan work, um, well first we hired Tom Milligan, who's a city of um, Biddeford engineer and a surveyor and a PE, um, pretty, pretty well-rounded guy, and uh, we enlisted him to walk our property, do uh, uh, a, a mortgage boundary survey and uh, help us to draw these off these these conceptual plans but go ahead scott oh, okay. so we started working on that little cape um trying to renovate that house we, we like to bring them back they were kind of seasonal places um which we're going to make them into hopefully uh year-round homes that we can uh, be able to rent those in the future if that's uh, something that we can do with the approval of the town here. And what we want to do, uh, what we're in the process, that the bigger square <laughs> right here is going to be a 60 by 60 uh, timber frame barn. It's going to be all notched and pegged like they did uh, right there. Uh, back in the day when barns would stand for 100 years. And it's going to be a beautiful building that we hope with uh, your approval and guidance in the future, we can use that for an event uh, center. Uh, anything from conferences to weddings to farm to table dinners. And um, with the 50 acres that we have there, kind of like the dog park there, we like to make this a destination. Um, people will be able to rent the two homes. Um, we're right in the lakes region of Maine. And they'll be able to cross country ski, snowshoe, uh, any of the winter activities, maybe horse drawn sleigh rides through the Abernathy uh, Horse Club. Uh, right now they do a spot up near Lyman. So we thought, well, maybe we'll approach them and see if we can get some horse sleigh rides. Um, and then when the other three seasons, you know, have that available for the farm to table dinners, maybe uh, some weddings, and anything that we can do for conventions that will bring people to Acton and into the area. So that is our concept, and we hope to beautify this uh, abandoned gravel yard into flower gardens, landscaping, vegetable gardens. Um, Cole's a big uh, ad advocate of, you know, even having like the pumpkins out there and having a big pumpkin gathering and trying to do something for all seasons to bring the community together. So we all became friends and met. Uh, we've had independent careers, but all in the realm of customer service or software or banking. Um, and Katie, uh, in wedding photography, so <laughs> many, many years, she's seen the rise of uh, modern weddings and uh, the rustic elegance. <laughs> you like to say something? I'll push you the spot. <laughs> yeah, um, just like the design and um, the landscaping, I'm just trying to think of all, so I've been a photographer, this is my seventh year going through the summer, um, and seeing what has worked for my clients, what hasn't, what they wish was there, what they wish wasn't there, stuff like that. So kind of gathering all that information and putting it into one venue. So it's kind of like, I'm trying to have like, in that mindset of what's everyone's dream mm -hmm. So trying to...
Mm -hmm. And the, these two houses that you think you would like to at some point rent out, uh, well, that would be well, for seasonal rentals uh, or year? Because when, when you say something like that to me, um, many years I, I was in landscape design, but I, I taught floral design. Uh -huh. And so I've, I've done barn weddings what? and things like that. Uh -huh. And the one thing you always find is, where are your guests going to stay? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. But that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that these two houses will be a place that the bridal families or the couple or friends that are coming from out of state will have a place to stay. Because as you mentioned, there's not a lot of places. Uh, Sanford has, uh, you know, the Oakhurst, which is now turned into weekly rentals. It's not even up motel anymore and then they have the, the motel eight um so there's not a lot of places around you really have to go to Austin Peter Rochester to find yeah, my own daughter home. got married up from New York City got met, married up here yeah. and we ended up renting three houses wow. on the uh, lake that's right to do it and I'll tell you that's not inexpensive yeah, yeah. yeah. and cool. you know that's when you look at your child and you say I love you dear but no <laughs> you may have this many guests at your right. wedding that's, that's it well, that, when we hunted for land, it took us, um, originally we started in Saco, and we uh, found 23 acres uh, bordering the uh, heath. And it, we, we realized that with the actual usable amount of land, it would keep us a little too close to the road, not as big as our grand vision, which, like Scott said, is to actually offer lodging, so rustic cabins to go with the rustic barn. So we began to look away from I-95 right. where we could get more land and when we found uh, the 50 acres for sale it was just in the nick of time it was up I passed the auction if you remember all that um, so we did some due diligence we came in and met with Ken right away we talked to the land use secretary at the time to say how uh, how's the zoning we saw the transition in the village um, where it bisects right right to the edge of the barn in a big arc so that there is Apparently, some um, uh, permitted lodging could be possible in that transition zone and maybe in the village. Uh, so we jumped on it, and so so the, the fact that it had two sort of end of economic life houses really inspired us because we're, we we saw well there they can be resurrected to be cute cottages, the salt box and the cape. We don't call them the wreck or the you know the. Like, well, you know, we're the 220. Right, yeah, we're in that workshop about the little word So we actually designed our like wedding packages to include a bridal suite and a groom's cave and where they can get ready for their events and then they'll get it overnight. With all the market research that Cole and Katie did, it's very common to have uh, an overnight. There's some venues like Flanagan Farm and others that actually give you the entire weekend, two nights, three days, you know, a lot of money. Um, so we realized that like the ante to even start a venue that could you do weddings is, is going to be lodging. Well, that pleased us because we've always loved hospitality. Uh, Cole and I had a, a five-bedroom lake house up in the Belgrade region, and for, um, well, seven years we were full. As, as much as we could be open, we were full. This was before Airbnb. We're talking like we had a realtor renting our house, you know, back in the days, uh, 2006 to 13. But we were always full. So we got a taste for loving the hospitality aspect, but we were cramped. And so their dream and our dream merged into this dream project. And so that's the idea. We. We found a timber frame company that builds it from scratch, so less risk, less moving parts. You know, they come, there, they saw it, they put it together, they peg it, assemble it, we just provide a foundation and a, and a, and a, a purpose. Um, so here we are, we, 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 we've been working on this for you know, about a year um, with all the moving parts, as I said, there's still plenty of moving parts. Um, and so we come before you to kind of sketch that vision and entertain you know, questions and concerns. And um, we're one to two weeks away from submitting our application. Uh, we hired Tom Milligan to do our beach field, all commercials, commercial class, everything. And we need to begin the, um, the process with you. So, we, we, 
Not to say any questions, but I keep talking, so I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more to say. <laughs> Are you cutting the trees off your property? Kevin saw it. Ah, okay, so there were there are it's a young forest almost all the property was logged if you look at google maps you can right. see in 98 all logged but that left a network of trails like logging roads that we'd like to take advantage of for skiing or hiking but there aren't we, we have no plans to remove any of these except two that are right where the leach field has to be and we even tried to not have that done we put the ribbon that says don't no you know keep this tree um, but, the, but with the work, the beach hill had to be sited just right, so those two trees will have to come down. But other than that, no logging, no terraforming. The parking, the two parking areas that we referenced, uh, you can see in the, the photos of the current site. There's, yeah, there's that one as well. That's a very good example. But we took some fresh photos on this page too, and there are already big the clear areas where they process gravel with what to me what looks like, like a type of um, stone dust in one area. And when we had our test pits dug, which is all gorgeous tight deep gravel. Right. Like wow. Yes, good gravel. Yeah. And, and we got a, 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 a verbal appraisal from a local contractor who said there's a lot of site material, like a, a lot of money of material that we have um, available for road upgrades, where the, the trail system can be upgraded. Um, I just would like, like to point out that there, there are mature trees all around the property, and that is like a, a buffer uh, oh, for right. us, and then we yeah. have to keep them. Yes, yeah. yeah, they left about 200 feet along that bottom and the sides by the apple orchard, and between the neighbors, there's definitely a, a large buffer. We're citing the barn, hopefully, um, or we plan to, uh, and with our Tom's survey, uh, setback survey, we're about 500 feet from one neighbor and 600 feet from the other. Uh, we met two of the neighbors, the abutters right there, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Uh, Joan and Rob Meyer, who was actually up, up for years on the comprehensive plan. And so we met with him and had a good hour-long chat, and his primary concern, he said, I, I don't mind anything going back there, except, if I can paraphrase, except marijuana growing. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> That, that operation done. Um, and then he said, um, just, you know, I'm concerned about the road. It's a right of way. And we said, well, we pledged to take over all road maintenance, upgrade it, do the apron, and plow it. We'll take over and cover all the costs from here on for the life of the business until our grandkids are, get tired of it. <laughs> but, um, and then we met with Leanne. She's new in town. She has the th three acres um, to the left right there. And she was thrilled. Actually, she and her uh, friend are running the main Renaissance Fair in the fairgrounds this July. Yes. So um, she said, uh, oh, wow, well, you, would you ever do farm to table or themed dinner parties in your barn? And I said, absolutely. We're happy. That's what we would like to do, you know, once we would like to diversify and bring the community together on there's like a lot of uh, farm to table dinners around Portland, but why can't we have around here as well? It's going to be wonderful. Yeah, right? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then, like, our plan is to employ, like, uh, local, you know, competent people that will help us, you know, run the business that would be on, on site. And, uh, right. and the park, we, we read through some of the, early, the earlier application on Milton Mills Road, and. We, we said, yep, yeah, check the box. We want attendance to actually help park cars and help seniors and handicapped. Uh, that's why we created that, we call it the barn loop. So it goes right in front of the barn, it's one way. We, we detailed that in the drawings, but mm -hmm. we're trying to really focus on accessibility. Right from the beginning, the bathrooms are ADA accessible. Um, for the Cape, we, we'll do a ramp, uh, a full commercial, you know, a full proper degree ramp. We, we, commissioned our life safety from um, Ro Roby Fecto, who's the life safety director in Biddeford as well. So he did our life safety plan, and, um, we, and Tom will stamp, all, stamp that work. Um, when the time's right, we will submit it to the fire marshal. But, but we do we want to be a professional event center. We've heard um, one of us is on, on the board of the bank, and we've 
heard time and again that there is not enough function space for corporations or banks or nonprofits that need to seat 100 people. That's you know maybe not um, super pricey like on the coast. So uh, with our contacts at SMHC and elsewhere, we, we hope to bring you know people back and, um, and you know we, we've already checked out the local businesses had you know dinner up on the hill there. We checked out the organic food store and the beer brewery and. The next we'll do the hit the soup shack. <laughs> so, yeah, it. it's very good. <laughs> good. And then we'll go to the cafe. I said you shot that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of <laughs> yeah. But, so um, on a personal note, uh, my two sisters live in uh, New Hampshire and Mass. And years ago, I heard my sisters going to their friends' lake houses every summer to hang out and. I'm like, where are you going? Because we're up in Belgrade with our family lake house that they're not going to because it's too far. <laughs> and they're like, oh, Acton, Maine. We're like, what? So we looked at Acton, Maine, and it's like a little lake region. We, we, we in our marketing, we're calling it the, uh, the York County Lake Region, just like Belgrade has its own, and Sebago has its own, well, York County, York has its own, and it's well known to all the friends and moms in, in Massachusetts and Hampshire. So, but well, let's tap into some of that, and increase some of the demand, and maybe even it out for year round. When they first opened that gravel pit up, uh, the guy that used to own that, Kelly's Orchard, um, Bob Lovejoy, uh, there used to be a road that went from Sandin Road, and it came out on the Hawk Road, that road that truck uses for the dry oh, lines. Yeah. And that road used to go all the way through. And they used to haul the gravel from there out through the orchard uh -huh. uh, for a lot of wet places and stuff in the orchard. That's why they started. That's why that opened up first. Oh, I see, man. Oh, good history. Mm -hmm. we, we did stop by Kelly Orchard to, to try to meet the owner, but instead we, we had a great chat with, um, the, do you call her the manager? Because she was like the yeah. superintendent of the orchards. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was great, but. We said we would love to do, if you have any desire to have the public in your orchard, we would love to feature your they do, little... They do a picking up. Good, yeah, yeah. So we said we would, you know, we want to partner with vendors and local people and bring their produce and display them. Like, if we can provide you the place. Um, but yeah, that's we, the whole orchard. Right? Yeah, that, other, that, other, yeah. that other piece of property on the Sandin Road, mm -hmm. that abuts you guys, yeah. uh, the pond is down here. Yeah. That piece is for sale. Uh, well, we have uh, champagne taste on a beer bottle budget. So <laughs> don't, don't tell us about that. We love that. But. I just say that things full of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a good draw. What are your thoughts about Acton having two wedding bars? Well, we. Uh, um, well, I don't think. Yeah, I think it's great to always have. Like, I, I mean, I sell antiques on the side, and more people go to Cornish, Maine, because of. Four antique malls, mm -hmm. and they'll go to one town that has, like Limerick only had one antique mm -hmm. place. So when you have a variety, um, it does make it a destination, and uh, people will see it. You know, they see already acting as the Lakes region. You got Great East, you got Wilson, you got Milestone, you got Loon. Now they see it like, well, this is a great place to, to have a gathering too, because not only do we have farm lights, but we also have the one on Milton Mills. You know, I, we we think it's great. Yeah. We don't see it as a competition at all. Yeah. In fact, we'd like to help create an association of main wedding vendors of all kinds and bond them together um, for some various reasons um, that deal with national um, platforms that try to own and own the customers. I can get into that later. But yeah, we would like to actually partner with every vendor in Maine, form an association, and have a good good spirit of cooperation. There's enough demand. We, we looked at some stats, there's a lot of unmet need that they have to go elsewhere or they go to hotels because there's not enough really, as we say, rustic, elegant places. Um, so the uh, webinar that we attend and because of your marketing and all that, uh, they say you don't have to be enemies, you can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, collaborate with, with, with each That's other. Right. So we don't see it. We see a competition, you know, good banks like it's a, yeah. And part of the research that 
Katie Cole found was that 40,000 people actually come to Maine uh, to get uh, married every year. And there's not enough places for that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, this is great. But it's not just a wedding barn, it's right. a event center. It's an event center. Yeah. Yeah. Just I did that. I came to Maine to get married. Of course, I was already here. But. <laughs> and we've never been able to get rid of it. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because uh, my wife and I got married near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I started with Continental Airlines. And four months into my job, our very first trip was to Maine. No. We rented a car and we went to Portland Headlight and drove along the coast. And I said to her, I just love Maine. You know, I would love to live in Maine. She's a school teacher. She goes, that's what you want. So two months later, we moved to Maine. And um, kind of like you, you know, we came here, we loved it. And then my daughter is a Mainer. I'm a, I'm a, you know, transplant, what they say. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been here long enough, I can tell you that much. <laughs> uh, I've been here since 1992, but yes. Nah, not even close. Three generations. You had another 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got 65. <laughs> cool, so your engineer will be working on wrapping up stormwater and stuff like that, working with the DEP, getting an application together, getting sent to us. Um, same as we had talked to the people before you once we've got it, the, the board of meets, send it to uh, Southern Maine Regional for a review on that side, and stop the ball, get the ball going. Right, thank you. Yes. Thank you for this thank opportunity much. tonight to share the vision. Thank you for this. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And one more. This shared entrance, but it really, it's really just would be your entrance. Well, it is a right of way, though. Just the right Mr. and Mrs. Myers. Um, Their driveway is something Yeah, it goes off to the left. Yes. So you'd be going in, but it's oh. Myers' driveway. This yeah. house is right there. Yeah. You yeah. just continue it right oh, through. Oh, yeah. When this, when Mr. Heffernan and Senior, I think, created the plan, and was it, was it Senior? Or, I thought there were two in the industry, a father who was a surveyor, and then a son. Maybe. That wasn't Chuck. It wasn't? Oh, okay. that wasn't sure, yeah. Ah, so, so then, so, then it, it, it they gave the themselves the 50 foot right of way when they created that birch, what was it, birch tree? Birch uh, woods. Birch, uh, birch woods subdivision uh, created all those lots. And the right of way was put in a deed for the remaining 50 acre parcel. And it, it, we carefully scoured it and um, we looked the lawyer looked at it and it says for all purposes. It's like forever. So. Birchwood did that. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that was a called. Birchwood plant on Birchwood acres. So do, do you know, was that a person? I have a family name? Oh, it's in the deed history that Birchwood. Acres. Um, we have it referenced in the um, in the notes on the page on the site plan page. You'll we'll see a bunch of notes about the book and deed. But but it's a 50 foot right of way, and it's been there forever with heavy trucks driving on it, so it's well built. Um, we can just take over the shimmy and whatever is needed over time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. So we'll be seeing you. Anxiously awaiting. Yeah. <laughs> Relatively soon. Um, we'll see who's engineer's fastest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the race is on. The race is on. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've got, I've got five grandkids and we're all oh. in that, you know, marrying age. Oh. And, and you have experience uh, with the flower uh, Yeah, yeah. I've that once and I won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't do it for your own. I do it for my daughter. No, no, won't do it for. And don't do it on a lake. I actually had to holler at them. Mm -hmm. They were getting married at uh, the five minutes to six. They didn't want to be married on the hour. Uh -huh. And at, at five thirty, I was saying, "Will you get out of the water?" They were still bathing suits <laughs> in the water. <laughs> yeah, it's very wrong. Yeah, would you please go? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, not like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we have this vision of a. Of a recreational day, so not just a formal event. Oh, cake, cake. Well, right, that's the thing. When are they going to get ready for the wedding? Yeah, that is exactly the way it went. That's exactly <laughs> the way it went. You know, it, it was a whole full day. Saturday is 
know, so. And then get them out of the water. Ocean and Maine, you gotta love it. Yeah, oh, timber frame, beautiful. Yeah, we. I did what you did. Well, after cycle, oh, I did that. But when it happens, you don't know. I don't have any more. I just want to be used to that. Yeah. 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 And then we somebody were, else would come um, with raffia. Two they wanted an offer. And they had that raffia. And it didn't matter what you did. Yeah, they were just doing that. Yeah, they were gorgeous. But I like, I really like your idea of farm to table. Yeah, we would love to have like hours of gardening eventually. Something like that. I mean, who just get a hold of on, sir? But he, I mean, many wonderful farms to see here. Yeah, and then even the local farm. Yeah, and then we make some sort of consortium. And we're probably going to try out Kelly. We hope to be Kelly sold a lot more with his other heads. Yeah, that we can get out of the pocket shed. Right. Yeah. Local, have you touched base with them? The government has got so. We have looked into Monica. They run out of business. And that's not a restriction. I mean, connect with Maine doesn't. They really boom. They just have three, four years ago. I give you an example. You see, there's right, there's 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 and I like that. Yeah. 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 The people that own Romac are also the store. The so they can buy red delicious. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of interest in Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're making yeah. yeah. great food and meat. Oh, no. I think it's on the subsidy of the pants and the state. Oh, it's definitely Is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. The restrictions on the refrigerators, they have all the chemicals and all the rest. They just got hot or not. That's not the same industry. So, okay, what's right. the Mac o max occupancy of the bond? Oh. Did you do a calc yet? Uh, we please? did. Yep. Um, we're all excited to say that. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> what do you say? I don't say 100. Uh, 160 um, oh, oh. for seated tables. You know, and a set, sit down. Uh, okay. Table for 6, 8, or 10? Uh, eight, isn't it? Uh, 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 ten. No, uh, it's on the little drawing here. Let me count. It's ten. <laughs> it's four. It's so they're big tables. Three, oh, four, eight, three by eight, eight, eight tables. Yeah. So oh, ten, they're three by eight yeah. tables. Okay. Yeah. They're not rounds there. That's right, not rounds. Okay. So that that shows one sixty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there. But we. Touches. So the very first inquiry we got was for two hundred. <laughs> no, we wanted to keep it finite with with. Tom Milligan doing the septic. We looked at where we wanted the barn, the shortest runs, the available leach field area. Uh, we looked in the lower level, which would have a lot of, you know, but a long run to it. So it turned out the best place was that. We, um, we said, you're, up, you know, it, the bigger you get, you know, all that, the right. more. So we, we, we thought we'd keep it modest. Um, yep. And, and the two houses would pipe into it as well. Uh, he, he did all the, the actual leach field set, uh, surface, subsurface disposal application is, is ready in, in for, to submit with everything else. Okay. Um, maybe the day comes we can do two on the property, you know, <laughs> if we're successful, maybe there's two. Uh, maybe we find the trout pond in the uh, <laughs> room. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yes, you too. 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 Yes, Thank you. Just grow the trees.
I don't know, did we put pages and page numbers on I it? I didn't put page, no. uh, as page numbers, numbers I put section numbers. Section numbers mm -hmm. on it. But so it they don't come, they don't follow an order because right. I noticed that section over here really applied to this section here. To and this I, one too. But especially so in the subdivision. Yeah. That jumped around a lot. The submittals yeah. yes. went oh into it quite goodness. a bit. And the information you need for yeah. submittals is way after a lot of oh, the stuff. Oh, a lot of the other things. So just so we become aware of that. So I'd, I'd love to have help with that, especially, you know, just yeah, follow Just through. like anything, once we start using it, we'll be able to tweak it. And, yeah. And, yeah. And it's going to be a great tool. Oh, yeah. to use. Then you have to. Yeah. We're running out of colors. We're running out of colors. I mean, you know, and we're going to have to get into the new colors. You know, go back to white. The shower oh, and uh, I don't think you know, whatever some of these green for a while. New colors. Kerry Winkles or whatever. You know, I grew up with the yellow sixty-four colors. That's you know. Yeah. 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 But I think the day for town meeting was moved move back move. a little, so we'll have to reaffirm move. that. Up. It's, it's, oh, it's July more. Yeah. 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 We've had the informational and a primary one before. Do we have a public hearing on that one? You had, you had the information. Right? We haven't had the, um, yeah. the one that the book calls for. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What has to be within 30 days of I, the I meeting, right? That so that it's right. not too far ahead so people don't right. miss it. Right. Yeah. Right. right. You can't have it too early. You could have it too early. You can, yeah. Like you, you want it to be within about 30 days before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. If it's 60 days before, people might not correlate the two. And if it's just 10 days before, they might it's mm -hmm. kind of too short a notice or something so, like that. Yeah. It has to be within that yeah. middle range. So like you're saying that we probably would want to have it in May then? Probably, yeah. Okay. Usually yeah. the first week of May is what we, we had it before at, we may need it at the second meeting in May this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. No, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't get any problems. Right, that we don't miss the whole time. Exactly. Um, at the last meeting, I thought maybe we'd want to put uh, best possible locations in this thing. I just yeah, there's a problem out there for a trash list. Just throw it out there again. I looked at that really quickly just to see how that would flow, and it, it's, it's not nearly as long, but it doesn't list of from like the book either so I gotta kind right, of right. that may so, be more yeah. guidelines versus regulations. Yeah. Uh, the book's gonna be Just very general but we may be looking at the past that we've looked at ledge, uh, tree removal, roads, setbacks, uh, terrain, uh, oh, things like that, yeah. power lines, yeah. things yeah. like that that it's just foundation of the Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good to have some sort of boilerplate for that. I think it makes things you know, interesting, like which is yeah. yeah, which is good. Right. Not people out of trouble. <laughs> well, we're going to be busy. Anyway, don't uh, uh, Nothing to do that. But it's, it, I mean, we're going to be busy enough that we don't want to be tripping over our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. No, because of the, it's like I said before, <clears throat> looking at these books for the layman. God is confusing. Mm -hmm. And that's what's tough when somebody comes in and tries to go through site plan on their own versus like uh, Grammy Rose, they hire a professional. Yeah. Yeah. He's got yeah. stormwater engineers hiring the stormwater, he's doing the surveying mm -hmm. stuff, they have architects, engineers doing the building, a lot more of a front cost, but they're going to go through one, two meetings and be done with it. Makes all the so it's not going to be as frustrating for the owners versus somebody trying to do it all on their own. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot more. But with the smaller businesses, for example, um, like me, for example, I wouldn't be able to hire people to do whatever. I'd have to come in here and try to figure it out. And come in and visit me yeah, every morning you know, for an hour or two. Yes, we have those. I mean, if I wanted to start a, I don't know, snack and potato sale or something. 
Do we put on a fly, or I don't know if we put them in your thing, there's a turtle seminar. Um, yes, there is a turtle oh, seminar, too. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, a survey for calculating. Uh, is it Alfred? I thought it was Pam. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Well, I'm just going to put a big offense around the garden. So yeah, the turtles are going to get too big. Huh? Listen, I've been turtles who won't stay out of it. Do they really? Oh, I okay. went out there one morning and I had five. Wow. Five in the garden all at the same well, time. Thank God. I've never had any come in the yard. I've had them follow me when I'm in the water. No, some turtles don't bother me. It's snapping turtles. Well, they tear stuff up. Yeah, I have it at my house. I'm a thousand foot elevation, three thousand feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looking for places to lay their eggs or something. Main oh, yeah. turtle yeah. roadkill survey. Right. I don't know if you survey dead turtles or how that works. Anything, right? Uh, gray and golden. <coughs> oh, you don't want to go to gray. Mm. You want to go to golden? No. Yeah, gray. Good thing. They both on Saturday. Yeah. Still a couple hours. Right? Last yeah. 30, yeah. 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 the other one was a stream smart class. I DEP finally sent me some information. Oh, the stream crossing. The stream. Yeah. Yeah, I was asked to go to that. Nice. Where is it? All? Uh, uh, Old and Falmouth. 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 April fourth. Yeah. I signed up for it. Did you? Yeah, I got one. I signed up. March twenty sixth in Holden. I just got two months. I'm going for it in Falmouth. Are you still in session? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes, we are. This is important information. <laughs> Somebody's got to count the roadkill turtles. Before we do, though, before we do adjourn, if that's your intent, a while ago, a few months back, Ken, I was asking you about uh, Southern Maine Regional Plan and then the cost. Mm, well, uh, hard to do back to that. And, yeah. well, I would just like to say what I've learned. This is the fee for the town? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that doesn't come out of your budget, does it? No. That comes out of the municipal budget, where it belongs. I just wanted to make sure that's where it was, because, you know, I found out since, you know, uh, we can buy, I don't know, what they buy in, but you can buy paper products, you can buy all it kinds of supplies. Like it's a, it's, it's a call-up, it, yeah. basically what it be. You can buy your, the top and buy this rock salt through there, and, uh, really, to call up with all the towns. Yeah, a lot of times you can get them to do uh, grants for surveying yep. or uh, road studies and things like that. They'll also do as well. So I'm not as dissatisfied now. I know the whole story as I was in the beginning. <laughs> I thought we were just paying that money, then we got to pay them to do the work. Yeah, yeah. it made no sense to me. Yeah, you know? the, the applicant pays them to do our work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So once we accept yeah. the application, now we can set up escrow accounts and things like that. Established that we've got the money now. We'll start the communication right. process. So it'll be co-op, really. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's cool. It's well worth the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was nice when it was in Chapel, yeah. Yeah, Springdale. Springdale. Yeah, it's going to be a lot further than Ludman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where is First it now? Yeah. South South South. South. Oh, they moved about a year ago. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of oh. What's his name that came here? Um, Schumacher? Yeah. So he, he said he lived nearby and he came from home. You know? mm -hmm. They don't always mm -hmm. have to come from mm -hmm. the coast. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, one bit of other news is um, Tom and Marie. Uh, Marie is really doing very poorly now. so. Keep her in mind, keep them in your mind. And um, this past week, Leslie uh, lost her dad. He was 92 years old, so it very sad, but uh, life well lived. And uh, she was on vacation in Tennessee when she got the phone call that um, he had passed. And they started coming home. Uh, and uh, they got home on Monday. And she got a call. They were going to start driving to Syracuse on Wednesday. She got a call that her brother took very sick. And she nearly lost her brother yesterday. And we don't know the outcome of that yet. You know what's going to happen. So keep Leslie on your mind as well, if you would. We have some nice people who are going through some tough times. Mm -hmm. and at that, I would. Uh, Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 
In favor? Thank you all very much. So are we supposed to be um, 